Are you tired of searching for the perfect prompt, only find it outdated when a new AI model rolls out? Then you're wasting your time again to search for the working ones or are you finding the current ones to make them work properly? After today's video, you will save a ton of time and energy to write prompts thanks to this technique. Without further ado, let's dive in. So what is meta prompting? Meta prompting is the art of delegating prompt creation to AI itself. It's not just time saver. In my opinion, it's a game changer because first you can automate prompt creation for various tasks and build your own library very quick with minimal effort. Second, it pushes beyond your imagination. Often we have biases, so we tend to build prompts in certain ways. Meta prompting can be useful to try new approaches, which might bring significantly better outcomes for your use cases. So let me walk you through how to achieve meta prompting with examples. I will use Claude for today's demo, but you can use any other tools like ChatGPT. So let's start with this basic prompt and build, build upon as we progress. You're a wizard prompt engineer. You write very bespoke, detailed, and succinct prompts. I want you to write me a prompt that will call a bracket task. Here, call a bracket is working as a placeholder, which you can replace with your original task. The benefit of it is you can reuse and organize your prompts better because you will not touch the rest of prompts here to change and to head to generate different prompts for different tasks, you only need to touch this bottom part. So with that, let's see the first outcome. Let me walk you through the output of this prompt quickly. Usually I look for persona, context, task, examples, constraints for good prompts. And honestly, I think this is even better for this specific task. For blog, it lay out the introduction and five key areas. And if we go down here, also talk about call to an action for the conclusion. And also mention about the examples, use cases and stats to support your points and also talk about the formatting thing, subheadings, split points, short paragraphs. This is pretty good, but I think I see the points for improvement for the output. The first thing is I would ask the output, output prompt to be in a code block. Then you don't have to drag over trying to find where to ignore and then where to include again and again. This is pretty cumbersome. And second, I would put this in a markdown. The first reason for a markdown is it increases your readability. If you already use Obsidian like myself, you are using markdown to structure your text. So it's easy to copy and paste it from your Obsidian and your notes. And second, a lot of LMMs now understand Markdown. So you're basically giving instruction, additional instruction saying this is the title, this is the subheadings, this is important words. So why not using it? So I would include here in the down as instructions saying output the prompt you generate in Markdown and in a code block generate and let's see the result again so very similar but now you can copy and paste and also you can see like the most important part up here prompt write an SEO optimized blog post for your topic so what is the next step the next step is copy this one and open up a new chat and use this one and see the real outcome. This will be the final outcome 
of your meta prompt and i already told on the artifact so you will see the markdown on the side so this is the output of our first meta prompt for a blog post about lmm if you look through it's pretty comprehensive and it's amazing we start only with a few sentences and ai generate prompts for blog posts like this specific prompts for us and we just copy and paste and we get the result very quick very efficient and i'll give you another example for practice so next example is we assume that we are product owner manager or software engineer who need to document the potential testing scenarios for their software as you can see this above part remains the same and i just added a few more lines here for instruction saying cover functional non-functional cases and add guidance for both manual or automated test cases and here i said generate comprehensive scenarios for this feature and let's see the initial outcome as you can see it gives me a really well structured markdown output functional and non-functional and positive cases and guidances and also here clear concise title special consideration for edge cases honestly i like it so the next step is, as we did before, copy this one, open up a new chat, and paste it, and see the result. Wow, this is pretty long output. But as we indicate in, the, in this prompt, it always starts with the scenarios and steps, expected result special considerations and another function another function like that so this gives you a really good starting point that you can start documenting for your teammates and what parts we can improve i see another part we can improve with this one because we didn't include a tone style format the way we want it and what if your team or organization has a specific format to follow or visuals let's say then what we can do is come back to original prompts here and then i will add it here and just assume that um, include visuals like diagram for a better understanding and save it and this will give us a new prompts we can use so new prompts showing visual representation and reporting requirements I think it add a little bit more than it used to be but let's see like how it got improved and open up a new chat and copy and paste it again and let's see the result what i'm intrigued right now is this this flow chart and let's see this is since this is mermaid one let's try to copy and see in the flow chart and copy and paste here so it shows a really nice flow chart and a credential invalid case is it on temp no mfa case and it doesn't show the the yes case happy path but it showed all the uh, all the set cases for you so you can copy and paste this image and attach in your document so that your teammates will understand better so that is the power of meta prompting. We started from bare minimum prompts. And as we progress, we put a little more information, 
but AI gave us really powerful full-fledged prompts for us to use right away without much modification so we can become more efficient and we can focus more on what matters and the last step we can also like fine-tune these prompts for different platforms so ChatGPT, Cloud, Gemini will interpret our prompts a little bit differently so we can fine-tune uh, to a specific platform we'll, we'll discuss that in the next videos Today, we learn meta prompting and how to apply them to your use cases. By understanding the core principles of meta prompting and learning how to create effective strategies, you're equipping yourself with a core, powerful skill set. This knowledge goes far beyond simply copying and paste random prompts. In my opinion, it's learning about how to create right prompts for any situation. So you're not just getting a fish, you're learning how to catch fish. Like I said in many other videos, I want you to experiment and evaluate how this is going to be beneficial for your use cases. To do so, start simple, begin with the basic prompts, and gradually add complexity as you become more confident. And experiment, try different structures to see what works the best for your needs, and iterate. Thank you for taking time to explore this topic with me. If you found this information valuable, please subscribe and like to stay tuned on the future discussion about AI, Obsidian, and business. Until next time, stay tuned.